Previously on Tyranny of Dragons, the front doors open and several men clad in armor rush out. Most of them run past you and set up a defensive line. A few others run and grab the unconscious party members and a single dwarf with a red beard stands in front of you both. He looks you both up and down. One false move from any of you and we'll throw you off the rooftop. Now get inside quick. Good evening, gentlemen. Are you ready to continue? Holy shit, that was close. I thought my days as Swolnald were over and we've hardly begun this campaign. Yeah, I thought we had that fight in the bag. What went wrong? Allow me to recap for you, Joe. Maybe someone else should. Check it. We had saved that sweet ass broad Lilliput. Lillian. From the lizard freaks. And we're walking through a forest when the elf chick. Not a chick. Overheard some shit not worth mentioning. We came to a puddle on the path. I walked over carrying Louise. Lillian. Getting a quick feel of each other's nipples as we did. The elf chick. Not a chick. Barely made it over when she got herself wet at the sight of my pulsing muscles. Then Midget. Killed Joy. Failed harder than the guy who conducted the Wuhan's lab's health and safety inspection and began to sink in two inches of water. Gurmley dove in and drowned for some reason, only using 1% of my power in my pinky finger. I lifted both him and the gnome out. I bitch slapped the life back into Gurmley. We got to Lithuanian's Lillian. house, the Cope, and were greeted by more lizard fucktards. The battle was long and fierce. Gurmley, the elf chick, not a chick, and Lucy, Lillian, all went down faster than a cheap hooker. The gnome hid in a corner and cried at his terrible magic abilities. Then, one of those dermatitis riddled hobbits tried to tickle my nipple. That's when I went super fucking say in and destroyed them all with a single flex of my dick. More started coming after me from down the hill, but I wasn't interested anymore. They weren't worthy of my time. So I picked up the elf chick. Not a chick. Laxative. Lillian. The now soiled Gurmley and the crying bitch gnome kicked the door down of the cope and casually walked inside. Oh yeah, and there was some soulless ginger dwarf and some dudes in tinfoil armor. That was interesting, Donald. Thank you for that recap. Now let us continue. The dwarf steps aside and gestures you in. As you both hurry forward, you see him grip his warhammer tightly. You notice his eyes are fixed on something behind you. The guards carry your unconscious party members. One has Lillian over his shoulder, two have one of each of Gurmless arms over them and his feet drag along the dirt. It took five guards to lift Swolnald. His head flops from side to side as the guards struggle with his immense size and weight. To think it takes five guys to carry my hulking mass of perfection. Two of them just to carry my dick. You're standing in a large stone courtyard. Moss over grows on many of the walls. Small archways, some with wooden doors, surround you. At the far end of the keep, you can see a tall tower, with the moon slowly coming in and out of focus as smoke continues to engulf the town. The dwarf is seen barking orders at the guards while keeping his eyes fixed on the approaching mass. Quickly now, get the wounded to the infirmary. I want archers up top and get that gate closed now. With a metallic clinking sound, you hear chains moving as the doors begin to shut. You can see into the darkness and smoke due to many torches being held by what looks like 20 or so kobolds. Their teeth bared, their spears or daggers glint off of the small fires and all of them cackling. Their pace is fast. When they're only 15 feet from the gate, you hear a snarl, quite audible over the kobolds. They come to a complete stop and go silent. Just as the doors close, you see a set of piercing red eyes, long teeth and blue scaly skin. I want Sharpen and Bama to roll a constitution check. You both feel a wave of fear unlike anything you have felt before. Your bodies shake at what you saw. You try to control your breathing to stop yourselves from fainting. The dwarf notices your panic. It's all right, lads. Nothing is getting through that gate. Did you see that just now? What was that? Would I have seen this thing before? Roll me a history check. You wouldn't have seen this particular thing before, but you recognize the features from a book you had been reading once. You realize it was a blue half-dragon. You better hope those doors hold, Sir Dwarf. They have a half-dragon with them. Fear not, young elf. Our gates have stopped worse from entering. Now, you must follow me to see the governor. I'm already here, Escobert. Standing before you is a tall human male, gray hair tied up, his best years not completely behind him his blue clothing stained with blood and a tired expression upon his wrinkled face. He smiles at you both. 
Welcome, travelers. I'm Governor Night Hill, and this is Escobar the Red, Master of the Keep. I give a nod to Night Hill. I am Bama the Wise, and this is Sharp and Fact Spitter. We need to see our companions and make sure they are all right. Yes, of course, but I have seen your friends being brought in, along with one of our own. They would be attended to right now by our clerics. Best to leave them, just for now. I have some questions I would like to ask you. We have some questions for you as well. Firstly, just what is going on in this town? A grave expression falls over Night Hill's face. It started around midday. A blue dragon came from the skies and began wreaking havoc on us. It tore our homes apart and brought the elements of lightning with it. While we did everything we could to attempt to stop it, we were then attacked from the ground. Hordes of kobolds killed so many of our people and set fire to our haystacks and houses. There were also another group, all wearing black robes. In all the chaos, we lost many good soldiers and more civilians than we have been able to keep track of. The best we have been able to do is to get everyone into the town's three most defensible strongholds, the mill, the temple, and here. It was a coordinated attack. The dragon and kobolds are working with the cult of the dragon. Our latest reports tell us they are taking every piece of wealth we have. Some of the robe wearers have been seen leaving the town once they have taken their fill. I would give anything to have one of their leaders here right now. I would get all the answers I seek out of them. Escobar grips his warhammer again, looking furious. Try to remain calm, my friend. As Night Hill lays a hand on the dwarf's shoulder, I have a question for you two. I saw you from the tower fighting those kobolds and I can tell you all possess great abilities of which we could do with. Would you be so kind as to use them once again and help the townspeople? I don't know how much more we, and I gesture to myself, and Sharpen can actually help with. We have used up our magic and required to rest for a long period of time. Our companions are also badly beaten, and they too would require a long time to recoup. Hmm. The governor dips his head slightly with his hand over his chin, stroking his beard. Perhaps we can help with that. First, go see your friends. The clerics should have healed the worst of the injuries, then head through that door over there. He points at a particularly small-sized door. We have an alchemist. Bit of an odd fellow, but a genius with potions. He may be able to help you. After which, come see us, and we can go over what we require from you. Thank you. We will be back shortly. And I head in the direction where they took the others. Governor, has there been any reports of a female elf with long red hair seen in this town? The governor ponders for a moment. I'm sorry, but you are the only elf I have seen, let alone heard of today. I shall ask my guards to keep an eye out, though. I catch up with Bama and head with him to the infirmary. You seem oddly concerned for the two we traveled with. You didn't strike me as the type who cared for others, or at least those two. I feel somewhat responsible for what has happened to them and to Lillian. And for that matter, yourself. Had I not been blinded by pride and just allowed myself the lack of dignity to be carried across that stream, we could have reached the keep before they closed up and might have not had to fight those kobolds. I stopped walking for a moment and bowed deeply to Sharpen. Please forgive me. You had nearly died as well. I put a hand out to Bama. All is forgiven from me, Sir Wizard. Mistakes were made, but the others will be fine, and so no harm, no foul. But perhaps in future, we avoid these situations and trust in each other to help. It is something I should have considered during that fight. I shake Sharpen's hand. You seem to do everything you could. Not everything. I still had enough magic to heal someone, but I selfishly held on to it for myself. From now on, I shall think more of the ones who head straight into danger. You reach a door with a sign of a medical cross over the arch. Inside are several beds, most taken with unknown people, blood stained with limbs missing. On one of the beds, you see Lillian, eyes closed. Oh, please don't be dead. I rush forward towards her side. As you do, Swolnald grabs you by the back of your cloak, lifts you off the ground, slams you into the wall, and pins you by your throat. I want you both to roll a strength check. What the fuck? Hold up. Why is he doing that? And why did you not describe him being there? You spoke over me before I could finish my sentence. I was going to say, Swolnald and Gurmley are both standing at the other end of the room. As for Swolnald's action, I passed Donald a note to let him know what happened to Lillian. And he asked me if his character could do this. Come on, Brock, let's roll, baby. Well, what is the meaning of this? I hurry forward. Swol, stop this. I run at Swol and attempt to pull him off Bama. Then you two can roll me a strength check. 
Donald, one more time from you as well. Gurmley is unable to budge Swolnald and Bama. You just hang there, choking, several feet off the ground. You fucking caused this. You and your damn weak ass. I should have just left you to drown. But because we spent time on you, Lillian, I go quiet and tighten my grip. But the clerics, couldn't they do something? The clerics were unable to save her. They went to find her family. We said we would wait here with her. Please let him go, Swole. The damage has been done. Don't make me use this. And I draw my longsword and point it at him. Joe, roll me a persuasion check. Donald, roll me a straight D20. I loosen my grip and allow Bama to slide to the floor. Then I place hands on either side of him and lower my face to his. You lose me another babe and I'll kill you where you stand. One of the clerics walks into the room, looks to Gurmley and shakes her head. It seems none of her family made it to the keep. They're either still in the town, hopefully having found somewhere to hide like the temple, or she doesn't finish her sentence and walks over to Lillian, lifting the sheet and draping it over her face, then leaves the room. I'm sorry, everyone. I was foolish and let my pride get in the way. I make a promise to you today that will never happen again. I throw myself down onto my knees. Your words mean nothing to me, gnome and I walk out of the room. Let's get out of here. I begin walking towards the door. I say nothing and also leave the room. I take a moment to reflect, then I will walk out of the room, but not before resting my hand on Lily and saying quietly, I'm sorry. The four of you stand in the courtyard. You can hear the sounds of raging fire outside the keep, and you can see many civilians and guards moving around inside. There is no sign of Escobar or Night Hill. We should plan our next move. You should shut the hell up. Swole, Bama isn't entirely to blame for what happened. I share responsibility as well. I could have healed Lillian or either you or Gurmley, but I chose not to. If you're trying to make things better, Elf, you're doing a shit job. Why did you not heal anyone? I didn't know how long this situation would last and I needed to be well enough to save my friend. She is more important to me than a group of strangers I only met today. Well, we have been thrown into this together. There was no intention of being a group, but we have become one of sorts. Perhaps once the danger has passed, we go our separate ways. I agree. I still have answers to seek here, but yes. Once these enemies of the town are dealt with, I shall seek them alone. Why bother waiting until then? I can't rely on any of you and these people need saving. I'll do it myself, and I walk away. Wait, Swole. Go fuck yourselves. For the time being, Swolnald has left the group. He has gone back to the infirmary. For now, let's plan our next move. Any suggestions? I've been thinking over what we know so far. There appears to be two groups, the cult and the kobolds, plus the dragon. And the half-dragon me and Bama saw outside the entrance to the keep. They attacked during the day, killing and stealing as they go. They have already cleared the southern part of Greenest. There are two names that came up when I heard those cult members talking, Mondath and Cian Rath. These may be the leaders who could also be wearing purple. The governor wants our help, but we don't know yet with what. And we're already drained from the previous fights, but the governor also mentioned seeing the town's alchemist for help with that. What sort of help could this alchemist provide? We're not sure, but he mentioned him when we said we needed to rest in order to get our strength and magic back. Let's go see him and see what he can offer. The three of you head for the smaller door the governor pointed out. Above it is a symbol of a bottle. I knock on the door. Enter! I push the door open. You find yourselves inside a quite messy room, full of glinting bottles stacked upon desks and on many shelves, all the way to the ceiling. Strange devices sit on the desks, some holding bottles of liquid, some with moving parts. The sound of a drip can be heard in several of these. Now and then a small noise like a pinwheel can be heard. Several clocks dotted around the room tick loudly. Various plants can be seen hanging from pots. Whiffs of odd-smelling aromas fill your nostrils. Sitting on a stool by one of the desks is an elderly gnome. He has a long white beard, spectacles that enhance his crooked eyes. He wears a brown top hat with a small pocket watch attached to the front. He looks ready for traveling as he is wearing a small backpack along with bags on his belt and a small waistcoat also with pocket watches. He tilts his head at you as you approach. Ointments and fizzle pop. I have customers, don't I see? Or do I? Uh, yes you do. Have customers, I mean. We were sent here by- Not time for your words right now. It's half past something already. Here, 
he had already got off his stool and pulled out three small sticks with a little red orb on the end. Put these into your speaking holes. He thrusts one into each of your hands. What are these? No time, talking hole now. Should we really be doing this, guys? A stranger wants to give you something red and pointy to put in your mouth without question. I don't see what the problem is. Can I make an insight check to see if he is up to something evil? Go ahead. You can tell he has no intention of causing you harm or of anything evil. Okay, then I will go along with it. You take 56 D4 necrotic damage. What? what? Just kidding. You notice a sweet raspberry flavor from it and realize it's just a sucker. Hmm, thank you, but why are you giving us a sucker? You looked like you needed them. They help promote good spirits, but have too many, and they are an excellent laxative. I put mine in my pocket. Same here. Please, fellow gnome, we were sent here by Governor Nighthill. He believes you may be of some help to us. Oh, and what help is that then? Myself and my elf friend here need to rest for a long period of time in order to regain our strength. But with the current situation outside of the keep, we simply do not have the time. Is there something you can provide us that will help? The gnome's beard twitches for a moment. Oh, yes, indeed, I can help with that. Well, sort of, or actually, no. Hmm. He rummages around one of the many shelves for a moment before holding out several small vials of light green liquid. You look closely and can see small sparks scatter themselves within the bottle and you hear a faint buzzing coming from them. These are one of my more experimental potions. I call them, uh, what was it now? Oh yes, elixir of time, although according to the last three that tried it, they called it a bloody disaster, but there's no pleasing everyone. Elixir of time? Bloody disaster? What exactly do they do? They trick time within your body, granting you the ability to regain full strength without the need to actually rest. That sounds amazing. I agree, that sounds almost too good to be true though. I'm thinking, considering you said the last three called them a disaster, what is the catch? Well, there are drawbacks or side effects, if you please. One fellow found that one of his ears fell off, another went blind, and the third couldn't talk. But they were Hadozi, so that may have been the reason. You see, I've not had many testers, so the drawbacks are unknown in their entirety. I had a dwarf who grew to 10 feet, and yet another dwarf shrank to 30 centimeters. One was male and one was female. I had two humans, both male. One gained gray hair immediately, and the other grew a bosom after a year. They were different ages. So you see, there's no telling what these will do to you. I see, and just how much are these going to cost? Wait, Bama, I grab his arm. You're not seriously considering taking one of these? Deadly serious. How much, sir? You may call me Terry Winkle Plum Pudding, and they are yours for nothing, as nothing is what you very well may have afterwards. Should you still live and be able to communicate, please let me know what, if any, side effects you received. Very good, I shall take three. And I scoop them out of Terry Winkle's hand, put them into my pocket, bow low, and head out the door. Do you have any regular healing potions? Yes, indeed, but these are not experimented on, so they're regularly priced at 50 gold. I'm a little short on funds. Could I get two off you and pay you back? Yes, I think we can come to an agreement on that. Let us shake on it. I put my hand out. You see that gnome has put both hands on his hip and started shaking his body. I copy him. And a deal has been made. Huzzah, here you go. And what about you, young elf? I'm okay, thanks. Good day, Mr. Plum Pudding. And I walk with Gurmly out the door. You walk out to find Bama waiting for you. And a little ways ahead, you see Swolnald with Nighthill and Escobird. Ah, excellent timing. We were just about to explain the plan to your Goliath friend here. I already told you, old man, I'm working solo. I have no friends in this town aside from my mighty great ax. We need all the help we can get. It would be in the people's best interest that you work with these three. I don't respond to this, but instead lean on my axe and give Bama a death stare. Tell us what you need from us, Governor. Come with us. They lead you to the base of the tower. Through the door, up a spiraling set of stairs, and you stand on the parapet. You can see the whole of Greenest, the many fires still burning. Over in the west, you can see a large windmill. Over to the east, a large structure similar to that of a church. You can also see the kobolds below in front of the gate with the half dragon, whose eyes are fixed on you all. I mentioned earlier that we have two other strongholds, the mill and the temple. We've been receiving reports that a group of kobolds are using a battering ram to try and take down the gates at the temple. 
Many of our people are still inside as well as our most treasured relics. We also have another that suggests the mill is being attacked with fire. If that burns down, our food stock for the winter will go with it and we'll starve to death. We have enough resources to handle one of these situations. Could you help us with the other? We'll gladly pay you each 100 gold for your trouble. Which one do you want us to take care of? That is down to you. Simply let us know which one you will defend and we'll send our guards to the other. If they're successful and quick enough, we'll send them to you afterwards as backup. Just let us know. Governor! A guard who was stationed on one end of the parapet suddenly calls out. Dragon incoming! He points to the sky and you all look up to see the wide open jaw of the blue dragon. Its wings flapping with increased speed as it hurtles towards you. Roll for initiative. Thank you for watching the latest episode of President's Play, Tyranny of Dragons. Before you go, I have a request. The party were given two options for possible quests they could take part in, save the mill and save the temple. Of course, they're going to be a bit preoccupied, so I'd like to free them of this choice and pass it on to you. Please comment below which one they should do. By the time the next episode airs, we will tally up the votes and announce which quest they will attempt. You can also take part in the poll, which will be posted an hour after this episode is aired. You could also join our Discord, link below, and post your vote there. Of course, depending on how the next episode plays out, there may not be a party left to take on the quest. Until next time, viewers, good evening.